Good morning, folks. We've got storms, weather records, some cool news from deep space, and something I didn't think I'd see for many years. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star was relatively calm. We see the large coronal hole turning through. Sunspots continue a silent decay and no solar flares have occurred. Solar wind takes the top slot to watch as a minor beginning to the coronal hole stream sets in with a phi angle shift to the sector boundary, interplanetary field pointing from Earth back to Sun for the time being. KP continues to be all good in the green as we await even more intense streams potentially on the way from the coronal hole itself facing Earth. Remember the intensified solar wind from it still likely has a day to day and a half to arrive. Let's go next to Cyprus. Shots coming in the major flooding that hit off the Mediterranean low that just refused to move for about 48 hours. About the only good news is that the island drains well. Cleanup begins. Weather Channel pulled Rutgers Snow Lab data and discovered that we just had the most snow-covered November in at least 50 years, as long as we actually have data going back. That's counting all of North America. Up next, we are going out to a star system just north of the galactic disk, and which is not super exciting to look at or study in terms of orbit, but peek in on the gaseous emission of the atmosphere, and hat P11b is spewing helium. This discovery includes the exact same thing found at another exoplanet, WASP 69b, which is referred to as a warm Neptune with a big atmosphere, also bleeding out helium. So when it comes to exoplanets, hot Jupiters, super Earths, cold Saturns, warm Neptunes, tiny terrestrial spheres, there's a lot out there and not all of it is easy to see through the forest. It's a forest of dusty plasma and it's hiding a treasure trove of dusty disks and nascent planets. You'll likely recall last year's bombshell about dust. They discovered 1,000 AU dust belt around the most studied dust ring ever. Well, this is in that same vein of amazing. These disks and their clear carving required millimeter to sub-millimeter wavelengths to see them. They have been hiding some amazing stuff in that dust. And now, to the top story. Folks, that is a NASA guy and two from the High Altitude Observatory in NCAR where Joan Burkpile and Lisa Upton are from. And this team is using the sun to make El Nino forecasts. Observers may not see this as odd because we do it all the time and for many phases and temperatures and cyclone seasons, but to see the unquestioned solar forcing of ENSO tied most strongly to cosmic rays from these scientists, it literally warmed my suspicious heart enough to melt the record North American snowfall. I guess global warming really is my fault. We've got your wind maps, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.